Hi friends, this is Star Thrifter and Poshmark will not let me print shipping labels. What happened is this morning I go on there and I had two really great sales this morning or three or one was from last night. Anyhow, two of them were really great and um, I was looking at it on my phone and they wanted me to update my um, tax information for the 1099s. And, you know, I looked through my phone and I thought, well, I'll wait and look at it when I um, get to the computer. And I get to the computer and uh, the first label, they either let me bypass it or anyways, I was able to print the first shipping label out. But when the second one come up, instead of allowing you to, you know, to click on it, to download it, to get your shipping label, it says update your tax information. Okay. I tried to update my tax information and um, the address and everything was right. And then you can either do your social security or your EIN number. I have an EIN number and they had it blacked out. And then they have whether you want paperless or not, which I didn't. I w would rather have one mail. Anyhow, I couldn't tell what the EIN was, but it looked all fine. I tried to submit it. It wouldn't work. And I thought, okay, well, I'll change. You know, there is some different choices for the address, like, some of it was capitalized, some wasn't. I have a P.O. box or the residential. I tried those. That didn't make a difference. It's still, every time I clicked on the bottom to submit, it say that, oops, there was an error. The information is not correct. I thought, okay, well, I'll retype the EIN number. And I went ahead and did that once or twice and tried to submit that because everything else is, you know, fine. Tried to submit it. Still, error. All right, fine. Then I clicked on go paperless, even though I don't want paperless and um, for the return, but, or, you know, the 1099, but I thought, well, maybe that's what it is. Maybe they're really trying to force you to do it that way. I don't know. I clicked that on still error when I tried to submit it. Then I got to where, oh, oops, you've tried, or sorry, or whatever. You have tried too many times today to update your information, try tomorrow. Are you freaking kidding me? I have two huge sales. One of them I'll get to in a moment. It was a very expensive sweater, sold for $350, and a pair of pants that sold for, I think, $64 that I need to print out. And I have them ready. And I want to get them shipped. And I can't print this out? Are you kidding me? Well, then I had to do the contact customer support, which I did that, and that's always fun because... They, you have to have a subject and the, or title and then the subject. And every time you try to put in the subject name or whatever, then it takes you to a different page to explain how to do the things, which you don't need that. Anyhow, I finally got one submitted. And they send you the generalized email saying that, you know, they're going to review it or whatever. I don't know. Something like that. Some sort of thing. Now I got to wait. Today's Thursday. I usually don't ship on Saturday. And we're supposed to get snow where I live on Friday, which I'll ship tomorrow morning. But after that, you know, I wouldn't be shipping on Saturday. You mean to tell me that these two items might not ship until Monday? I don't know how many days Poshmark gives you to ship because I always ship pretty much next day. And I know you have a few days or whatever, but I had one once. I know it was a holiday and it sold either on a Thursday or Friday. It didn't ship till that Monday or Tuesday. I don't know. It might have been a Friday to a Tuesday and just had a reminder. But anyhow, I was not happy and there's no way to bypass it I was not happy anyhow regarding the sweater that sold hear me out I know okay when I picked up this it's the it's the um the elder statesman sweater that I had a video on if you haven't watched that you can check it out really high-end sweater when I originally picked it up, and I think I, when I was at the store or afterwards, I was kind of like doing really quick comps on it, you know. And I thought, oh, you know, this could sell for around $200. Yeah, you know, that's a really great find. But then when I really started researching and looking more, there was a few on eBay that sold like 700 and I think there was one around eight or 900 I thought, okay, just list this started out high because then I don't really know, you know, and I don't think I checked the sell through rate at that time because it was just an expensive sweater. And, um, I don't know, maybe I did, but I was figuring I'll just list it high and go from there. I had it listed, I think for eight ninety, I think somewhere around there, either $900. I had it listed on eBay and Poshmark. 
And it's only been, I don't know how long it's been now, a few weeks, maybe a month, you know, that I've had it listed. It's not been that long. However, you know if you sell over a certain amount, you got to get it authenticated on eBay and Poshmark. And I don't usually sell stuff over that amount. And I don't know what the, the threshold is for that. But I did Google this morning on Poshmark. And it has to be something, I think, over $500. On eBay, I don't know. It might be around that. I don't know. I'd have to check that out. Or you can check it out. I thought, okay, well, it'd be really nice if I didn't have to go through the um, authentic, uh, you know, authentication process. Just, I mean, I know that it's it's fine. It should be fine, but it's just the fact that I've not ever done that, and then you have to ship it to them. And I, I've just never did that, you know, walk, you know, steps to do that. And I thought, well, it'd be nice, you know, to kind of not have to do that. Well, somebody sent me an offer this morning, and it was for three hundred and fifty dollars. I thought, that's a long ways off from what I have it listed for. However, that is quite a bit above what I originally thought maybe I'd get for it. I went ahead and looked at it again, did comps on it again. And really, a lot of them did sell for around 200 That was really more probably the going on a lot of them. There's a few. There's, I think, maybe a 700 when I did comps today. The sell-through rate is not very high. I don't remember exactly what that was, but it wasn't. There's not a lot listed, but then there's not a lot sold. And remember, you're selling a used sweater, and somebody is going is offering you $350 for it. I did hold out, and then I thought, okay, I checked another thing. I looked at the the size is only an extra small, and I well, you know kind of forgot about that. That's a really small size, and it's harder to sell that size. I thought, okay, you got to buy it right now. Sales really were slow the last two days. I'm, oh my gosh. I think yesterday I took to the post office maybe um, two items. Now today it was it was cr slow last night, yesterday and last night. But the, from late last night to this morning or whatever, I had quite a few sales. And they made up for it, you know, on eBay. I, sh I should just say that the day before it was just really slow sales. But $350.00. Don't have to do the authentic process, authentication process, and it's an extra small. And a lot of them sold for around 200 I went ahead and took it. And, um, you know, I still think that's a really great price on a used sweater. Now, it looked like these may have retailed for around 2000 But we do know that when you're selling resell, resell, reselling things that are used, they don't, you know, some... It depends on the brand, but a lot of them don't cop out, you know, to, even if it was something brand new, a tax wouldn't sell maybe for as much as what the manufactured price might have been originally. Now, I don't know if they run sales on that site or whatever, but I think that $350 was still a great price for this sweater because of, you know, all the factors I've already mentioned. Anyhow, it would have been nice, you know, if it would have been for more, but I just thought, ah, that's really a lot for that small of size and waiting on it. Anyhow, but this is one of the items that I can't ship. The other item is a really nice item. It's a Derek Lamb and it's a pair of pants. And I think that they were like flare. I think there might've been around a size four. No, four or 10. I know that's a big difference. I can't remember. Oh, it was called, um, it is 10 was on, you know, the, the style name. But, they sold for $64, which I thought was really a great price. Pretty sure that's what it was. And um, that's a really great price for a pair of used pants. And I know that that can, you know, that's more of a high end. But I couldn't print that shipping label either. I was not pleased. Anyhow, hopefully, they it, Poshmark is pretty great about, um, you know, checking um, anytime that you, you know, contact customer support. Um, yeah, they send that, you know, generalized you know, thing that they received the, um, that, that you submitted something or whatever, you know, um, to customers, a question to them, but they usually do answer pretty quickly and hopefully they'll answer tonight or tomorrow morning because I would like to get those two things shipped before next Monday. Anyhow, hopefully you've enjoyed this. If you'd like, you can subscribe. I got a lot of other videos up. I haven't done too many thrift haul videos lately. Write in the comments whether you enjoy them or not. I, I like to do them, but I really didn't know if it's something that people really would like to view or if they don't like it because they feel like you're giving out trade secrets. But I'll tell you what, and this is the truth. 
I have learned more about brands to resell by watching other thrift hauls or what sold videos. Because there's a lot of brands that you maybe have never even heard of. And I understand that it is kind of giving out the trade secrets. However, a lot of these things, you're, you know, a lot of them you're not going to find every day. And they're harder to find. Now, if it's a bread and butter, it's a little bit different story. And I know you're probably thinking, well, even if they are hard, you'd like to be able to come across them and maybe not have a ton of other people know about that brand. And I understand that. However, I do feel that there's more than enough out there for everyone. That God provides more than enough for everyone. God, you know, thank God for that. God, thank you. And... You're not going to come across a lot of those every day. And, you know, there's a lot of factors, too. It's not always just the brand. It's the style. It's the sizing. It might be the color or the material. There's a lot of factors. And this is a really hard game, this reselling game. It is. It's a very hard business. It's very competitive. Things change quite rapidly. Some things that might have been popular a few, even a few months ago sometimes have declined. Some brands, you know, you really got to stay up on it because if you're picking up the same stuff that you did maybe a year ago, they might not have the same sell through rate. And there'll be other brands that maybe are selling really great, whether they're a new brand you've never heard of, or they could even be a brand that you've heard of before, but you didn't realize that that particular style and that particular size was, um, you know, something selling. I know one thing is Abercrombie and Finch. They are like a camouflage pair of men's shorts. And they're not, I don't think they're just a zip up. They have like a drawstring too. And those are selling for a little bit of money. You know, check it out. I can't, I, you know, don't have any of the comps. Don't remember what the comps were or how much, but those, you know, just to give you an example about something. Anyhow, if you could push the thumbs up button, I greatly appreciate that too. Many prosperous sales to you. Thank you.